Handoff, Adrian up the middle, room to the 20, cuts to the left to the 25, and Adrian's loose! He splits the defense! 50, 40, 30, goodbye, baby! Touchdown! We bleed purple, and our bones are gold. Hear the horns coming out of our don't behold. We are Minnesota Vikings fans. We love when a player scores. Hello there, Vikings faithful. You are listening to the Purple People podcast for the week of July 21st, 2013. We're about four days away from the start of Vikings training camp, and that can mean only one thing. Football season is literally right around the corner. I am your host, Kyle West, eagerly anticipating the return of Vikings football. Alongside me, as always, Folks, in the brightest of days and the blackest of nights, no evil shall escape his sight. It's Adam Carlson. It's me. It's me. It's the D.O. Double G. Ah, I went with Green Lantern. You go with Road Dog. That's that's <laughs> hey, where we, we're different, you and I. That's true. I actually didn't even really know what you were doing. but That's the Green that's Lantern cool. oath. Sure. Yeah. But I'd like to welcome everyone to the Purple People podcast. This is episode number 60. I can't believe we've done 60 of these. Woo! And the show is titled Ice Sage Dawn of the Dinosaurs. Ah, huh. that's kind of clever. Later on, we're going to be talking about Sage, but first, let's introduce our special guest, and that's Nate Weck from South Dakota Public Radio. Say hi to everyone, Nate. Hey, how's everybody doing? Fantastic. Explain to us a little bit about what you do there in South Dakota and what makes you a Vikings fan and all that nice, fun jazz. Oh, well... I, I guess job-wise, uh, I work for uh, South Dakota Public Radio, um, technically South Dakota Public Broadcasting's audio side, I guess you could call it. We cover everything from spot news, um, which could be anything from what's going on, like maybe somebody got arrested the night before, um, to maybe some maybe a special team's got a media day or a university or something like that, or maybe even this past week, a Black Hill State selling the president's house. So that was oh, wow. the news last week. So um, it can be pretty much anything, I guess you could say. But, yeah, it's uh, a lot of uh, a lot of keeps me jumping. Not every day is the same, so I, I do have a good time. Um, as for, uh, yeah, I guess um, yeah, I, I am a Vikings fan, so you, you can put that to the list. And I've nice. been a Vikings fan as far as I can remember. I remember 1997. Um, starting to really watch the team in 98, went to my first game, saw Randy, and it was Randy Moss's first game as well. Always had a fond memory of seeing whoever it was at the quarterback spot, whether it was Brad Johnson from that first game, uh, whether it was Jeff George, whether it was Randall Cunningham, uh, whether it was Todd Bauman, whether it was Cole Pepper just going back to throw the long ball, and everybody in the dome just stands up. They know exactly where it's <laughs> going to, and it's big number 84 down the field, but mm-hmm. always had of that i think my favorite viking of all time is probably chris carter just because i thought nobody had really overcome as much as him um, that was on the vikings roster when i was growing up and i thought he played with more heart than anybody he made some of the most fantastic catches that i'd ever had ever seen and i i think honestly that he's probably one of the top five receivers to ever play the game but of course i'm biased because i'm a vikings fan so there you go <laughs> <laughs> well thank you for being here with us i'm thank you for taking the time out Now let's take a minute and let's shoot on over to Kyle West and talk about the question from social media. Go ahead, Kyle. I have a really good social media question for this week. Uh, Lots of great ones to choose from. As always, you guys make this difficult to pick just one. I'm going to go with Eric. Uh, He wants to know what starter from last year's team has the biggest chance of losing their starting position this year and to whom will they lose it to? Now I'm going to go with the easy answer and make you guys think about this. Uh, even more so than what I have to. I'm going to go with Jerome Simpson. I think that uh, he's going to get the nod early on, but I think very, very quickly Corderell Patterson will be able to jump over top of him in the depth chart and uh, take over that starting spot from Jerome Simpson. Oh, yeah, Cordero, you aren't going to be able to hold him down for long. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go even easier than you. And I'm going to say that Chris Cluey will not uh, return as a starter. Adam, that, that doesn't count, uh, Adam. He'll be the man. <laughs> Who? Lock it up. Who? Lock it up. Who is that again? I don't know any lock on the team. <laughs> spelled weird. What do you, too, isn't it? <laughs> what do you think? Um, me 
you know, I guess I was kind of going to go the Adam Carlson route as well, and I was going to pick a player who wasn't there last year. I was going to say um, Bishop coming in to take over uh, Brinkley's spot at the middle linebacker, but I guess there that's still kind of up for grabs because we don't know. Aaron Henderson still says he wants to be part of that spot as well, but well, I think definitely we're going to see an upgrade, though, overall from the linebacking core, but uh, it's it's I, I'm I'm excited. I think you know, there's there's a few other positions. Maybe I, I kind of agree with you as well, Kyle, with Jerome Simpson and him probably losing that spot for sure. I think that's a, a definite for sure. Um, and maybe we may even see a little bit of a change with the other safety spot opposite of Harrison Smith this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like to see some, like to see a little bit more competition out of the other spot. I'm not 100% sold yet on Jamarcus Sanford, but overall, I think uh, I think uh, what you guys both said I think was goes pretty good, and I think the Vikings had a pretty good off season to really add a lot of competition to some of their spots. Definitely, definitely. Well, let's go into talking about our main topic, which is Sage Rosenfels. I know, I know, he's not a Viking. I'm aware of this. Sage Rosenfels has hung up his hat and decided to retire. Now, Sage was a 2001 fourth-round draft pick of the Redskins, but he only appeared in 45 career games and 12 starts. He was the definition of a career backup. He had an 81.2 quarterback rating, 62.5% completion percentage, and he had a 30-29 to touchdown-to-interception ratio. Now, Sage Rosenfels was one of those guys that you never heard of being the next big thing. He was always that guy that was there to help out and to be that backup. And I think that he, when he came in, he did help out this team quite a bit. How about you guys? Well, but the thing about Sage is that he was always just good enough to bring about a quarterback controversy if you didn't have a solidified starter in place. And that's kind of the story of Sage Rosenfels coming to Minnesota. You know, he was initially brought in to compete with Tavares Jackson, and then it turns out we get Brett Favre. And so that didn't really happen. And he's brought back the second time, and uh, we'll get to this in a minute. I think the Vikings should have kept him on the roster instead of going with Joe Webb, uh, I think they would have been better suited for when we needed a veteran to step in in that playoff game in Green Bay. Uh, I think Sage would have been a much more viable option than what Webb would have been. But we can talk about that here in just a second. Okay, sounds good. Uh, I agree. I think uh, I loved uh, – I think – I think what the play is Sage Rosenfels are probably famous for, and I love it, is that helicopter, mm-hmm. that helicopter play that occurred <laughs> the when he was helicopter. But yeah, he gets called to, called to Minnesota to take over for uh, to add competition there with Tavares Jackson, and then all of a sudden nobody was satisfied, and in comes Brett Favre. So it's always been a kind of the thing where, oh, you're going to be part of the competition, but really, really not really. You're just going to kind of help the starters, and maybe you'll just take a back seat. But mm-hmm. he was I've always loved Sage Rosenfels. I think he's uh, he's almost kind of, he reminds me of Gus Farratt in a way, except he doesn't. Throw Throw it as hard as what Gus Rock could throw it. Mm-hmm. Now, Kyle brought up an interesting point when we were talking. Now, what would have been different if Sage Rosenfels would have been kept instead of Joe Webb as the backup quarterback last year? Would we have seen a better performance when Christian Ponder went down with his arm injury? Oh, you definitely would have seen a better performance. I don't know if. Sage would have been able to do enough to win us the game, but you would have at least had someone under center who looked like a competent NFL backup, but a quarterback, to say the least. And Joe Webb didn't even hardly look like a professional quarterback in that game, and it was embarrassing. I think if you would have had Sage on the field, uh, he could have taken more advantage. He would have had a better understanding of what the defense was going to be doing. And even if he wouldn't have been able to make plays like what uh, Ponder could have potentially done, he wouldn't have been doing the thing that Webb did where he would lob the ball just straight up in the air instead of taking a sack and just, frankly, looking embarrassing in the backfield for Minnesota. I still have nightmares about that. Mm -hmm. How about you, Nate? What do you think? Rosenfeld would have played instead of Webb. Mm -hmm. Well... I look back to preseason last season, and I see I saw Joe Webb as the odd man out. I thought Joe Webb from the season before, uh, 
you know, ended the season, that really bad season when Ponder got hurt right at the end of the year. Uh, ended the season against Detroit. I didn't think that was a very good ending for Joe Webb and a performance. Um, then the next season, I was like, well, you know, maybe we'll see some good progression out of Webb, and I just didn't see it. I thought Joe Webb was easily the odd man out, even behind Bethel Thompson, and they kept him. And I think the reason they kept him was just because of his athletic ability, the fact that he can use his legs, that type of a thing. And they didn't want to get rid of Bethel Thompson because I think they're seeing a lot of potential in that kid. And um, I think they could see him maybe developing into a very good backup someday. But then you get rid of Sage Rosenfeld. So you get rid of that veteran guy who was on your roster, a guy who was watching Brett Favre like a hawk when he was on the roster. And it's just like, you know what, I... I just didn't see it. I thought Sage Rosenfels should have stayed. And then come playoff time, all of a sudden, boom, down goes Christian Ponder. He can't play because of his arm or elbow, I guess, is more specifically what it was. And you have to go with Joe Webb. And I think every Viking fan knew the season was over when they saw Joe Webb throw that pass. And it went about three, four yards shot. <laughs> yeah. And it hit, hit the ground right in front of the receiver's feet. It's like, wow, we are doomed. If we have to throw the football in this game, we are completely doomed. And at that point in time, I said, this is the same Joe Webb that people were calling for when when Christian Ponder was having his struggles. This is the same Joe Webb that people thought we should have had as a starter coming in because they didn't think we needed a guy like Christian Ponder. They didn't think Christian Ponder, Christian Ponder was the answer. And I'm just like, you know what? This right here just proves to me that, that, that Joe Webb should not be on this roster. And if he is a part of this roster, he shouldn't be a quarterback. And now what do we see? He's, he's got moved to the wide receiver and this is going to be a big year for Joe Webb. But again, this is about Sage Rosenfels. And the answer is yes. I think we would have had a much better chance of winning that playoff game with Sage Rosenfels as the quarterback. I don't think we would have went to the Super Bowl by any means, but I think he would have given us a chance to do some good things in that game. Well, we have maybe lost the game still. Yeah, we, we could have, you know, where it's against the Packers at Lambeau in January. But the fact is, we had a guy who's at least a game manager, doesn't make the mistakes, and can actually throw a ball to his receivers and not into the ground. I know it's, you know, and I know it's tough too for a guy like Joe Webb to be called on in that position to say, you know, day of game, okay, you're the starter, you got to go out there today. I know that that that's tough to do, and I know that it's hard to mentally prepare. But as a backup quarterback in the NFL, you have to be ready at any moment to be able to step on the field and go after it. And Joe Webb didn't do it, and I think. You saw, you see the you saw the uh, the effect that it had on the coaching staff, and they made the move very quick and bumping him to the receiver spot. And I'm very glad to have someone on my side uh, in terms of Joe Webb, because I've taken a lot of flack from a lot of people over Twitter and Facebook because I'm not a big Joe Webb fan for all the reasons that you've stated. Now I think he's he's a great guy. Uh, the, his teammates really seem to like him. And he just doesn't, I just don't know really what they can do with him. And I'm basically ready for them to move on, to, to move on from Joe Webb. I would not be surprised if he gets beat out by one of our other younger guys at receiver. Uh, <clears throat> well, wide receiver will be his mm -hmm. last chance, I think. If he doesn't yeah. make it this season, if he doesn't crack the 53, he will be gone. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. So he's going to have to work hard and get one of those spots mm -hmm. to keep his career going. Yep, agreed. He's just... But, yeah, go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. Well, well, I was, was going to change topics, but if you have more to say on this one, go ahead. I guess all I was going to say to kind of close it was, you know, people from other teams aren't going to pick him up either because they saw the way that he performed in the playoff game when he could only complete about 40 per, less than 40% of his passes. And they haven't seen him play at the wide receiver spot because he's never had a chance to play really at the wide receiver spot in a regular season game unless it's like out of a wildcat or trying to do something funky. And then we just end up handing the ball off anyways to Adrian Peterson. But I, yeah, I just think, I think this, honestly, and, and this is the last year for Joe Webb in Minnesota. I don't see him being any higher than at least the number five receiver on the roster. And his playing time could be a little bit big, better at the beginning of the year. But if he doesn't show some production, you got younger guys like Patterson, you know, pushing you. And maybe even a guy like Jerome Simpson, who's going to try to improve this season. You know, I think you see Joe Webb just slowly decline, jump, to, jump down the ladder. And next year, we're talking about somebody completely different than Spider-Man Joe Webb. But if the teams, if a team is willing to take a chance on a guy like Denard Robinson, I think that they'd be willing to take a chance on a guy like Joe Webb too, if he fits the right scheme. Like I could see him going to a team like San Francisco and being their quarterback three, 
or something like that. I don't think he'll ever develop into a, a player that a team would want as their backup quarterback or, God forbid, their starting quarterback. <laughs> but he could be one of those guys that they use as a gadget guy or a fill-in for a guy if he gets injured because we saw how RG3 got hurt when he was performing in that style of offense. So you got to have bodies ready. And if he is one of those ready bodies, he could get his name called. Yeah, it could happen. It could happen, and there's there's a lot of teams out there with a lot of question marks at their quarterback spots who might take a chance on Joe Webb as as part of the depth and just due to the fact that he has had some successful games um, at the quarterback spot. He has won a few games with his legs. And here's a low blow here, but he might be better than anything Jacksonville got. <laughs> oh, Jacksonville, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. I didn't, I didn't want to say exact names there, Adam, but uh, <laughs> that's right on there with Jacksonville. I thought, that's who I was, I was thinking of. I'm like, that's a team right there that's got really nothing to lose. They could they could put an entire offense around a new quarterback, and they've got Why F- not? We have a we have a history here at the podcast of uh, making fun of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yes, we do. Uh, we'll have to tell we'll have to tell you more about that one after we're off the uh, we're done recording here, Nate. But that's a <laughs> that's a pretty funny story, actually. But let's move on to our second topic, and this one is headed up by Mr. Kyle West. We're going to be talking about running backs. We are going to be talking about running backs, and this is a topic that I am so excited to talk about, and not for the reasons that you guys are probably thinking. Um, when you think running backs, Adrian Peterson, right? That's the Peterson. the first guy that comes to mind, Peterson and Gerhardt, and I am Not going to be talking about those. I'm going to be talking about another back on the team named Bradley Randall. Now, show of hands, how many of you guys even heard of him, like, last week? Anyone? Ooh, ooh, me. Well, I know you did, because I filled you in on the the subject that we're going to be talking about, Adam. (laughs) But, uh... The point is here is that he is a guy that nobody is talking about right now, and I really think that he's a name that Vikings fans should be paying attention to. Definitely. Yeah, he he's uh, he he could be very exciting. I know I know Viking fans like for years have been saying, why don't the Vikings go after a guy like Darren Sproles? Mm-hmm. And like this would maybe be the chance for the Vikings to have that guy and they wouldn't have to pay the guy multi-million dollar contract to bring him in. So, I mean, it, it could, it couldn't turn out to be very, something very cool, but do you think the Vikings are also going to keep four running backs on their roster? So in other words, he might have to challenge somebody. He's going to have to challenge somebody for that number three spot in, in, in my eyes and that being Asiata. Yeah. Uh, I so. was just going to say, it's going to be between, I think Bradley Randall and Matt Asiata for that third running back spot on the roster. And I think that Randall has all the potential in the world to jump up and take that job from Matt Asiata. Now, I know a lot of you listeners out there probably have no idea who this guy is. Well, I did a little bit. And by a little bit, I actually mean a whole heck of a lot of research on this guy. And all I'm right. I'm going to give you guys like the Mike Mayock draft day recap of Bradley Randall right here. Um, So, Adam and Nate, you can kind of relax for a moment. Um, I am going to just fill everyone in on Mr. Bradley Randall. How about her? Okay, so we got some stats on him. He's 5 feet 7 inches, 190 pounds. Um, He ran a 4.49 40-yard time with a 36-inch vertical. Now, he signed with Minnesota on April 28th, 2013 as an undrafted free agent. Uh, I found it interesting that he signed on the 28th, and his college number was number 28. So that's, I think, a fun coincidence, too. And speaking but he of, will not get that number in Minnesota. <laughs> he will he, No, he will not be getting the number 28. Um, he's <laughs> currently number 38 for the Minnesota Vikings. Well, now... He compared himself in an interview to Adrian Peterson. This is how I took note of the guy, because he said, little AP is what he runs like. And my first reaction to that is, those are, fight- <laughs> those are fighting words. You're going to call yourself little AP, you better be able to back it up. So I went to YouTube, 
and watched as much game film on this guy as I possibly could. All right, hold on just one second, though. Okay. I, I got a comment I got to spit out here. Whenever anyone says little something, yeah, I always think they're talking about their genitalia. Huh. Well, I'm so I'm, when he says little Adrian Peterson, I think he's talking about that. Well, he he might be. <laughs> um, I'm I'm confident that what he's actually talking about is his play on the field, Adam. Oh, <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, which I can I've got some positives and some negatives about him. Okay. He for a little guy is actually a really good backfield blocker. If you look him up on YouTube, you're going to find a play of him on special teams where he made the ESPN. Uh, you know, they do like the top 10 plays of the week. He made number three on special teams coverage uh, where he was running down the field and he comes out of frame like a friggin' lightning bolt and just absolutely blasts a guy, gives him like ragdoll effects like something out of Madden and the guy that he hits goes in a, all over into just a pile of mess on the field <laughs> he hits amazing for a small guy and he he blocks better than what you would think for someone that would be five foot seven would do too um he's going to be a talented kick returner and good on kickoff coverage he's a smart player you can tell that from watching him because he can you can see him look and you can see him like look for his holes and where he's going to go. Um, to me, though, he has to prove that he can be a blocking back on third downs if he's going to make the roster. Um, he's lightning quick when he gets into the open field. He's got that extra gear, that extra burst of speed, just like Adrian Peterson has. Like, I understand what he's talking about when he calls himself <laughs> little AP, because you see this, you see Not him, that. you see him <laughs> get into the open field and he looks like he's running full speed. And then all of a sudden he kicks it in and he's running even faster than what he was before. Um, he's a definite North and South runner. He's not, he wasn't particularly good at going side to sides in college, which means at a pro level against even bigger talent on the outside, he's definitely going to need to work on that. And he's not very effective as a pass catcher. So that's going to hurt him as well. Um, I don't know how well they'd be able to use him in screens and such, but that is something that he can, they can work on him with. Um, and his size and durability, I think, is a big concern in an NFL level too, just based on his size. You know, he is five foot seven. So how, how well is he going to be able to handle a full NFL season? I, uh, but from what I can tell, He's going to work his butt off, and he's going to do everything that the coaches ask of him. Uh, just based on the interviews that I've read, he's very, very super excited to be on the Minnesota Vikings. And I'm going to leave you with this quote from him. Uh, keep in mind that this is an undrafted guy saying this. This isn't like a first-round draft pick. He's undrafted. And he said, I poked my finger on accident, and guess what? I bleed purple. Once a Viking always a Viking. So <laughs> this, nice. this guy, he wants to be here. He wants to be a Viking. He's going to work. I don't care if he's undersized. He's super quick. And I really want to see him make this roster. All right. I went through, I did research on, well, a small amount of research on each of the people that Bradley Randall is going to be going up against for the job. Now, I think that Bradley Randall has a good size and speed to make him a good prospect for a third down running back. The problem is that I don't know if the Vikings will want to take Adrian Peterson out of the game ever. Whether it's third down, second down, first down, they're going to want Peterson in there all the mm -hmm. time. But let's talk about last year's third running back, Matt Asiata. Now, he had three rushing attempts for nine yards and one catch for two yards last year. So they didn't utilize him a lot but his real value was on special teams. Then we have Joe Banyard, who was one of the members of the Vikings practice squad last year. Odds are that the team has seen enough of him now to make a decision on what they want to do with him. So they'll be able to figure that out and see what they are going to do with him. Jerodis Williams was, is a rookie out of Furman. He has soft hands and his balance is one of his greatest assets. He doesn't seem to have an elite speed, 
but he's got enough to get the job done. He's a converted wide receiver. Now, a guy that I really like who's being listed as a running back, fullback hybrid. Joe Webb. going to give Bradley Randall a good... Joe. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to give him a good push for this job as Zach Klein. Most would call him a fullback, but he has the size and ability to be a short yardage powerhouse in addition to being a lead blocker. But with Vikings tight ends who are on the team that can also perform those duties, Zach Klein might end up as a practice squad body. Those are the... I think that Brad would be a pretty good running back for the Vikings. If, but like you guys said, he has to be able to block. I think when you look at a guy like Asiata last year, who didn't get much playing time for the team, um, it's hard to be able to say, you know, oh, yeah, Asiata, it's time for you to move on just because you have two really good players in front of him. You know, I don't care what people say about Gerhardt. I think Gerhardt's still a pretty good blocker. Everybody just remembers that game against San Francisco where he fumbled it three times. But right. I, th- I think, from a good standpoint, though, I think Gerhardt does a lot for this team. I think, especially with the blocking, I th- he's he's a, he's a good player in my eyes. I guess you could say, but you know, should that be you know enough for them to say, you know, I think bring Brad in. I think he's going to be a good opportunity to get that number three spot. He's he's an electric guy. He's got a lot of good highlights, but can he block? I think that's the real key. Love to see the guy work some screens. You know, he's a guy that if you can get a good defense you know draw a good defensive blitz in and you just dump it off to him and you have blockers out front he could make a guy or two miss and could could take it to the house he could be a difference maker so really excited to see him in training camp in a few weeks like i'm sure you are as well here kyle oh yeah and see what it can do because you know it's all about that i want to see what he can do maybe they'll put him in special teams you know see try him out at different angles and again he wears number 38 uh, i think <clears throat> That, that speaks a lot too. He's not quite 28 like he was in college, but that's okay because there's gonna. I have a feeling that after Adrian Peterson's out of Minnesota, nobody will still be able to wear number 28 because his number is probably going to be retired. So that's a number that you're not going to see in Minnesota outside after Adrian Peterson. I I would. Say. But yeah, should be interesting though. Um, I'm again, I'm not a big fan of Asiata, but I can't say too much negative about him just because it's it's probably just the unsureness that I've had because I haven't seen him play too much. But of course, when you have Peterson and Gerhardt in front of you, you're not going to have a lot of playing time. No. Nope. Uh, one nice thing about Bradley Randall is that they might be able to swipe, steal him away on the practice squad without having another team swipe him up, and then they can work on issues. Exactly. Like blocking and pass catching and, and de- really work on developing him, and that might be the best role for him this year. I agree. I think that'd be fantastic. You know, he's very young yet. Um Put him out, you know, put him put him with some guys, you know, have him working with maybe the third team offense a little bit um, during the during the season and just get the guy working, you know, see what see what this kid can do and see if he can develop. And if they see enough potential in him, I yeah, Adam, I think that's a good observation. I think that's a pretty good guess as to what's going to happen. We'll have, just have to wait and see to, uh, what's actually going to happen with that. But I again, this is a guy. You don't see these types of players come along too often, and I think that his athleticism might be enough to draw enough attention where I think they might keep him around. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, we're talking about him now, but I am pretty confident in this next statement. When preseason comes around, there will be a game that all of a sudden everyone's going to go, who is that number 38 for the Minnesota Vikings? Because he's going to flash in preseason, and it's going to be late in the game, fourth quarter, when all the guys are out there, that all the undrafted bubble players that you don't know who they are, and Bradley Randall will shine for the Vikings this preseason. And if you haven't followed him on Twitter, please go do so. He is one of the nicest guys. He followed me back almost immediately, and he sent me a personal thank you for following him. Oh yeah, Which, I've been talking. You don't see that. No, too I've often. been talking to him over the podcast page as well, and uh, I'm going to tweet him and let him know that uh, we did a, a feature on him, and hopefully he listens to the show. So if you are, thanks for listening, Bradley. <laughs> yeah, we wish you the yeah. best of luck here in camp. You know, we'll be there. Viking fans will be there supporting you, and you bleed purple. It's a great, great organization to be a part of, not just on the field, but off the field as well. It's a family. Uh, we'd, we'd really like to have you be part of the yeah, team. Yeah, I love that quote about him bleeding purple, because there are guys who get drafted that don't have that much passion for the game, and here's a guy who's undrafted that is like, you know what? 
he might not even make the roster, but he's already like, hey, I bleed purple. I'm a Viking. I'm going to play my heart out for this team. I love that in a player. It's great yeah. to see. Well, let's move on to our third and final topic, and we're talking about tight ends. Not Kyle Rudolph, because we've talked enough about him. We know that he is the next big thing as far as tight ends are concerned for the Minnesota Vikings. So let's talk about some of the other guys. Let's talk about John Carlson first. You related to How him, much Adam? Longer? Do you guys think? What's is he that? your relation? You know, I like cheeseburgers. I do. <laughs> Just every time you just sidestep that issue, and I I really want to know. I think you two are related. How much longer do you think John Carlson will be able to stay on the roster, or do you think that he'll improve enough this year to where he'll be able to cement a position for at least a few years? Um, me, personally, I think that he's going to have a better season. Um, I think there's going to be a few players we're going to see that have a better season, but I think John Carlson <clears throat> is one of them. Um, I, you know, I, I say it about a lot of guys, but Carlson and, and, you know, Carlson is a guy who I think could be a lot better of a tight end and a lot bigger in this league right now. If he just didn't get hit by the injury bug as often as he does, even last season, you know, he was hit with that injury bug. It seemed like all the time. He, what was it? An ankle or a hamstring or calf injury, some kind of a, a leg thing coming into the season. It was his that arm. Really, Wasn't it? His arm. Yeah, it was okay. his arm. On a, I just went out on a limb there. <laughs> no. Oh, I get it. it. Um, but no, I, 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 you know, the, you guys saw that catch in training camp, or, or not training camp, but in mini camp that he had. Um, of course, that was Castle throwing the ball, I believe. Mm -hmm. But still, it was. He, he shows that he can make some of those tough catches. But can he get separation with, like the way Rudolph does? I don't think so. I think Rudolph is a tough find. I don't think you see tight ends like that that come around that often, but I think where Carlson really steps up is he's, is his blocking. I think he's a very intelligent player. One thing that we really didn't see Carlson make a lot of was pre-snap penalties. Um, he did have a few holding penalties, but pre-snap penalties, he was pretty, he's pretty good on. He's pretty solid with the playbook. Um, he seems to always find a person to at least go after. So it's not like he's missing a lot of blocks downfield. I think he makes a pretty big impact, but this is a make a break for him as well. If he, folds after this if he folds this season once again it's going to be bye bye john carlson and, uh you know thanks for the second chance but uh you know good luck in your future endeavors mm -hmm. all right and then we got red ellison one of my personal favorites on the roster at tight end this guy still can do it all he can catch passes he can block he can run with the football we saw him a lot in trap plays with Kyle Rudolph springing him off into the corner for those nice little touchdown passes that Ponder seems to love throwing. And Red Ellison is one of those guys, too, that he's a hard-nosed guy, a hard worker. And you love to see players like that on your team. It's really fitting that Red Ellison wears the number 40, which was uh, the number for... Uh... Oh, shoot. Now I'm drawing a blank. Can't even say his... <laughs> Klein Saucer. Jim, Cl yeah, Jimmy Jim Klein Saucer. Thank you. Uh, it's really fitting that he's wearing Klein Saucer's old number because those are two very similar players in their style and even kind of how they look, too. Got the oh, iron yeah. effect. Yeah. No, I th yeah, I think, yeah, I agree with you, Adam. I think uh, he's a very dedicated player. Um, he's... he's there every day working his butt off and I do once again feel that he's going to make the roster and you know maybe if Carlson kind of dumps off a little bit maybe we'll we'll see Red Ellison get a few more um, opportunities at moving up in the roster and who knows a year from now we might be saying man you know how the Patriots had you know Gronkowski and they had a guy like Hernandez at one point got to be careful when you say that nowadays yeah cause whole different thing but that, that was like looked at as the dual tight end package you know who knows maybe a year from now maybe people are saying man kyle Rudolph and red ellison that is a, a dynamic group they've helped christian ponder out so much and you know you start adding more receivers to the mix too it could even bring linebackers off these you know it could force more zone coverages and bring linebackers off the tight ends you know we could see a lot of cool things from those tight ends this year i think both tight ends Regardless of who's playing the tight end spot this year, I think they're going to have more success than they did last year just because I think the field as a whole is going to be more spread out. You remember when I, I said that? in a previous show, and this is, I don't know, maybe last year, Adam, that by the time it's all said and done, Kyle Rudolph 
will go down as being a better tight end than either of the two that New England had at the time. And you did say that. Now it turns out one of them is in prison, and the other one can't stay healthy. <laughs> and when he is healthy, he wants to just go party and play around with porn stars. And yeah, I agree with Nate. I By the time this season is up, the media should be talking about Kyle Rudolph and what either Carlson or Rhett Ellison as the other two. But uh, yeah, it's they're going to be focusing on our tight ends here in Minnesota because we got guys who actually want to work and play <clears throat> football and not murder people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be absolutely honest. I see Rudolph Carlson Ellison making the roster, and I like Chase Ford. I don't know much about Colin Anderson, but I don't think either of those guys will crack the final roster. It's a tough spot to make the roster on for the Vikings at that tight end position. Yeah, there's so much young competition now. There's so much. And the thing, too, about the West Coast offense is we demand so much from the tight end spots. It's not like, you know, Denver... You know, with their tight ends where you're running a lot of shotguns and things like that, you know, when you want to run a West Coast offense with a lot of running, a lot of quick passes, you know, some screens here and there, you're going to demand a lot from your tight end and you're going to you got to make sure that you have guys on your roster who can keep up with that. And I, I love that about about Midwest because you see a lot of that West Coast style and you see a lot of good tight ends. Um, and I just I'm you know, it's an exciting position. It's a position that I've seen, you know, we've seen a guy like Jim Kleinsaucer excite us for years at that spot and we've seen now we've seen the whole youth switch and all of a sudden we have another good guy in coming from the other side and Kyle Rudolph that's built up you know it's it's fun to see those types of players making big impacts Mm -hmm. definitely now speaking of tight ends Friday was tight end Chase Ford's 23rd birthday so happy birthday to him and I wish him all the best Let's go into quick hits now, where we're talking about lots of things, kind of quick. Why I call them quick hits. Oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's why I do it. <laughs> New Vikings wide receiver Greg Jennings will be on an upcoming episode of the hilarious show, The League. The show has featured former Viking Sidney Rice and current Viking and monster Adrian Peterson. I've never heard of it. But I don't I don't watch much television, so now the Vikings and St. David's Center hosted the Tee Up for Tomorrow golf tournament on Tuesday. It's a charity that assists with early education and intervention services. I love saying stuff like that when the Vikings are helping out charities. Yeah, they they do a lot of good stuff. You know, that that's you know, what I was talking about earlier is like um, when we were talking about uh you know Bradley Randall a little bit. <clears throat> talking about how it's how minnesota is so good on the field but they're good off the field as well you know that's what i love ever since ziggy came into place Mm -hmm. and yes even though we we didn't really like him at the time and a lot of people still you say the name childress people don't like it but when when childress was coach he made sure that players he he would he would have meetings and say where are you guys going this week what are you guys doing in the community this week and i think that 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 speaks volumes all over the place because it keeps the vikings players out of trouble as well and i think that's that's huge too i think you know that stat came out recently that the vikings were you know the vikings are since 2000 are one of the top teams with having players arrested but i think in the last five years you'll see that that is completely flipped and you'll see the vikings as one of the leagues yeah and that stat how many players were on that boat with that. Oh, <laughs> no, that's a love boat. Let's, let's not talk about the love boat That's anymore. That's where that stat came from, when ha- all 53 members of the team were on that boat. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. Now, Wide receiver Jerome Simpson has been working with Larry Fitzgerald at his camp. It's good to see Jerome Simpson taking initiative and working hard this offseason. Mm-hmm. I love it. Love it. I wish the guy, hope the guy can become the guy that we hoped he would be last year. And anything that he can do just is going to be a bonus to the team this year. Speaking of Larry Fitzgerald, recently he admitted that he's still a Minnesota Vikings fan since childhood, despite never actually playing for the organization. He was a ball boy for the team, though. That's a fun stat. Yeah. He was. I think it's cool that Christian. I think it's cool that he can come out and admit that, hey, he was still a fan of the team because we're all fans of the team. Oh, sure. And we know what it's like to either grow up in Minnesota or around Minnesota. And you can imagine that if you played football, you'd have been a big Vikings fan. And at some point, 
you the chances of you getting drafted to that team probably slim. If you end up on another pro roster, yeah, it would be hard to be like, oh man, I'm no longer a Vikings fan. I've been drafted to the Raiders and now I got to play for them. So it, yeah, I, it's cool that, that he can still admit that. Now, Christian and Samantha Ponder hosted the red carpet activities at the ESPY Awards on Wednesday. <laughs> well, most said that they did a good job. Chicago Bears safety Chris Conte disagreed and tweeted that he wanted the Ponders off his television. Oh, too bad. You know, suck it up. I hope they have fun <laughs> in third place in the division this year. <laughs> oh. Oh, yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yep. Meanwhile, Adrian Peterson won two SB awards at the event. He brought home wins for Best Comeback Athlete and Best NFL Player. But he lost out on the Best Male Athlete Award to LeBron James. Oh, oh that's a whole different <laughs> argument, but oh, that's all I have to say. <laughs> Speaking of Adrian Peterson, he spent some time in Uganda working with the Starkey Hearing Foundation. He was helping hearing impaired people get the equipment that they need in order to hear. Very cool stuff. Yep, that's yep. good stuff. I like that. That's the kind of and stuff... My final... Hold on a second, Adam. That's the kind uh, of stuff okay. that I wish that the media and even you go to NFL.com, they don't report on that. Like, you... Yeah, exactly. They don't make any mention of that, but they will do 24-7 coverage of the Aaron Hernandez case. Like, they'll plaster that into the <laughs> ground, but they won't ever talk about, like you said, some of the things, the positive things that players like Adrian Peterson do. And that's why we mention them here on the podcast. Absolutely. Yep. Yep, that's, that's just another thing of the Vikings organization doing good things off the field. I love it. <laughs> and my final quick hit for this week. Vikings Hall of Fame wide receiver Chris Carter will be signing autographs November 6th. I know that's a bit away, but make sure to mark it on your calendar. At the Field of Dreams in the Mall of America from 630 to 830. Awesome. Mm. That's, 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 that's just good stuff right there. That is one day before the Thursday night game of the Redskins versus the Vikings, just so you guys understand. Again, love Chris Carter. I loved what he did. Favorite Viking of all time to date. So, you know, it's... I, I I'd love to get his autograph. I think that'd be I think that'd be real swell. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a jersey I'd like him to autograph. That's that's something that I'm thinking about. Then I mean, frame it, put it up on the wall. Yep, for. yep, exactly. That'd be that'd be awesome. T- tell your kids the story someday about it. That'd be that'd be the dream. Absolutely. Well, that'll do it for me this week. Do you guys have anything else you'd like to add? You still need to see Pacific oh. Rim, Adam. No, yes, I don't. You do. Stop it. <laughs> Never. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Nate? Do you have well, anything else for this week? Well, well, thanks for having me on once again. I think this was this is fun, and you know, hopefully, you guys have me on again in the future sometime. And you know, season's getting closer here. I know Kyle will probably see you uh, at training camp here in a couple yeah, of weeks. Yeah, see you up in Mankato. To... Yeah, and and it's getting it's getting close here, guys. It's it's that time of year again where it's you okay. start to crave it, and here in a couple you know, three weeks and we got preseason already. And that's just going to be that, that, that's a real fun time to see that first preseason game and see the, see the guys at work. And pretty soon before we know it, we're going to be at another Viking season. So really looking forward to it. All right. I'd like to thank everyone for listening. I'd like to thank Nate Weck for joining us. Remember to listen to South Dakota public radio. You might hear something from Nate on there. All right. Thanks for that guys. (laughs) Check out Facebook, check out Twitter and stay classy, Minnesota. Hear the horns coming out of our own behold We are Minnesota Vikings fans We love when a player scores We roar, ignite the stands We bleed purple and our bones are gold We're the kings of the north, our slogan skull No packer, no bear, no lion can beat us We will punish anyone if they try to defeat us He's the MVP Appreciated greatly, running all day, 2K, that's AP. Make a defense cry, or maybe beg. ACL stands for Adrian's crazy leg. He's the heart of the team, 28, holding up that Lombardi is a part of the dream. We will never give up, we find the faith to move forward.